to make you different in the next hour or so you are going to be entirely different and the transition will be obvious sing the national anthem Director, Monty Surveying in the Ministry. You are welcome, sir. <laughs> Mr. Batemi O. Onashido, who is the incumbent president of the Nigerian Institute of Community Surveyors. Mr. Onashido, please. <laughs> we know he's the chief host, but we must recognize his presence. Mala Mutala Muhammad Ali, past president of the Nigerian Institute of Community Surveyors, and incumbent president of the Ponti Surveyors Association Board of Nigeria. You are welcome. We have some of our board members here. Mrs. Anete A. Oke. Okay. 
Madam Aneto gave some of the new entrants into the profession, at least as far as the law of Nigeria is concerned. Jacob Abiodun Bamitele Awolish. We also acknowledge the presence of 20 surveyors and practicing firms to be inducted today. Thank you. And by the way, yes, I place myself out of existence. My names are Onkua Esen Suji. Of the Water Minister of Works, Power and Housing, the President of NIQS, past President, immediate, distinguished um, board members, colleagues. Uh, let me start by apologizing for the little mix up. Uh, we had uh, from the Secretariat. The chairman of the local organizing committee lost his elder brother just a few days ago. And I think that created a gap uh, in the information. And um, I understand that most of the members that will be inducted uh, I'm not aware that the induction will take place first. And in fact, some of them didn't even dress, it, dress up, dress up for it. So sincerely apologize for that mix up. Um, but we're still going to go ahead uh, for the induction, or rather with the induction of those who are here. And also, uh, those who are not here will have to prepare another moment for induction because we're going to make it mandatory. For the election, so the people will not just come and pick this and uh, and go away. Now let me start by welcoming you all to this mandatory program of the board. The board, as established by the Act in. Uh, 1986 was really meant to give teeth to the conservation profession. So the NIQS pushed and pushed and ensured that we have a legal backing to our practice. When we started, there were just a few persons that were registered and licensed. Intense. And the growth was very slow. But as from 19, after 2013, the number started boosting up from about 1,400 to what we have now, uh, over 3,500 persons that are licensed to practice conservation in Nigeria. This number is increasing. But it's still not adequate as the Nigerian economy is growing in size. And our population is also growing astronomically. So we need to have a more competent hands in the practice of conservation in this country. Let's also recall that um, this same board we see started from just one desk somewhere in Lagos, where people come and register, pay their money and um, get a number and leave. Today it has a life of its own. It has a huge secretariat functioning, trying as much as possible to support the NIQS and the profession in its endeavors. But we must know that life itself is dynamic. And the changing patterns in our lives, including 
our relationships amongst ourselves as persons and as professions but with the environment that we live in are in constant change. The market is changing, client's demand is changing, consumption pattern is changing. You live in one part of the country, your consumption habits are the same as somebody in an entirely different location in the world. Everything is becoming or rather taking a global standard. So also is the culture of projects. From small projects where you get the architect, who will employ A, B, C, D, and the project starts, to now a wholesale delivery, where a developer picks somebody and says, look, I want this project. Now he takes care of whatever the inputs will be. So many things, the timing of projects should be. These are just um, the challenges we as professionals face and continue to face. Expertise, unlike before, where you have, let's say, uh, Ijogun and uh, Associates located in the street in Ibadan and will remain so forever. The pattern has changed to the level that not only that the farms are not located in one place, but that the activities are not only located in countries, like our president here who has offices in uh, Rwanda, Gambia, and so on. You know? President, am I right? So, expertise is becoming nomadic. Trade agreements and protocols, like the ECOWAS agreements, like the AU agreements and protocols, are also affecting our relationships. So, actually why we live or why our project is doesn't matter. Now, what that says is that whether we like it or not, we must reach up to global standards. Now, back here at home, whether you're in Nigeria or in Ghana or anywhere, the nationalistic activism and populism in developed countries, and you know what's happening, the right wings are taking over governments or governors in those countries. They are squeezing non-indigents of those locations so hard that most of them are tending to come back home. Now, when they come back home, they are coming back with different approach, with approach that is more global, better standards, more zeal and drive, and they're coming to compete with you here. In addition to that, pattern of relationships also are changing in terms of knowledge and, and technology. Automation is taking over all practical skills. Robots are coming to play roles that humans play. So, what does it say to our future jobs, our future skills, and our know-how? The emerging situation will affect our training patterns our course curriculum and content. It will also affect how we channel our sources and energy in the schools, in the offices, in the industry. As everything is changing fast, whether we are ready or not. In Nigeria, I would say that professions are over-regulated. We're all enslaved by regulations. And we better loosen out. I'm not saying we should subsidize standards, no. I am saying we better let boundaries collapse because whether we like it or not, 
our pollutions and our emissions. Another thing that we have challenged here is that at every point in time, one profession is hounding another, trying to create a light space for itself within a small cubicle, instead of expanding the cubicle. Recently, we have a paper that's been submitted to the NIQS and us that the Nigerian Society of Engineers, I'm oh, sorry, the uh, Korean, has increased its um, scope by regulations to include costing, to include the evaluation of uh, assets, and so on. Fair enough. What do we do? We cry, we scream, we go to court? No. This sort of collaboration, we waste a lot of energy in displacing one another, or at least trying to do so. Now, the crisis of relevance among professionals is increasing while the nature of markets and human needs are changing at uncomfortable rates. Professions, especially those in the built environment, either open up, modernize, adapt to changes, and prepare for the future or gradually slide into irrelevance. Like I said, machines and robots will take over our jobs. Something else will replace us. <laughs> Every profession or whatever, or engineering or built environment must from time to time review its structures, modus operandi, and contents in order to survive and become sustained in a viable form. Now this is what led to the theme for this assembly, strengthening the conservation profession in Nigeria for global competitiveness. The Nigerian Institute of Conservatives, NIQS, has so far done very well. And is doing a lot more. We have started doing certification courses in the academy. Now, beyond expanding the frontier of services and looking at visible and latent potentials and increasing opportunities, the QS Academy should serve as a think tank. It's a very essential aspect or arm of this profession. It should guide the profession by enhancing our value creation capability. The Institute must promote and fund research, not just in the contents and technology, but also in the social aspect of the market. The market is so dynamic, will also be pragmatic. We need your support. The board will be open to suggestions and inputs in our efforts to achieve this. We've already reduced the pressure. We have, um, like I said, we, we, we need your support. And, uh, this, uh, we already reduced pressure the board puts on the operating space. We are playing more of a supportive role to the institute rather than a competitor. We will continue to reform by collaborating with the relevant publics to ensure that the profession of conservation remain a leader in the real environment. Before the board was running programs that are also competing with the institute's programs and so on, we said, no way, we'll have this annual assembly, which is mandatory. And if you are unable to attend the annual assembly for whatever genuine reason, what we expect of you is to pick up the materials for the annual assembly. And then you must show evidence that you have attended one national event of the NIQS for us to qualify your license. Now at this point, I want to use the opportunity to once again welcome you and uh, also urge you to open up to speak to one another and to listen to one another so that we can make suggestions that will help the board to play this for their profession at an advantage state. We understand the situation generally is very tight. The market has not been very good. Uh, so we appreciate the fact that people are still able to make it to, to come. Now, as for the new inductees, you'll be licensed to practice from this afternoon.
putting a huge professional responsibility on your shoulders. You must jealously protect the sanctity of your stamps and seals. And that's why the stamps are numbered. If we give you 100 stamps, they are against your name. So if you see 0358, we know it belongs to A. You must also keep updating your knowledge. Because, I mean, the, what you learn in the class, what you learn in the seminars and workshops here, uh, still limited. Sometimes when you what you learn in history or in philosophy or in whatever form will be what will enhance your mind to be able to appreciate and to get yourself. You must also note that these licenses are renewed annually to protect the integrity of the license and to ensure their potency. Let me, on behalf of the board, welcome the Vice President of the board, who is just working in. <laughs> Mr. Vice President, you are welcome. <laughs> let me welcome the, let me, let me on the behalf of the board, actually, uh, sincerely thank the Honorable Minister uh, uh, of Power, Works and Housing. We thank the Minister for his support. So. Mr. Kelly, please pass our message to the Honorable Minister and uh, uh, wish you all a full celebration. And uh, once again, I apologize for the late start because of the information mix up. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm surprised. This man who just spoke, huh? one of those who will sign your certificates, and I just clap in like that. Mr. Bafemi, I'm not sure. To give us his good, 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 good message. So, I should be here. We thank you for the good work you've been doing at the registration board and the innovations that you're bringing in. One of which is this QS assembly of once in a year taking stock of our profession, where we are, where we should be going. We, uh, we thank you for this and uh, we pray God to give you more strength in continuing. Thank you. My immediate past president and my lecturer and trainer, still training <laughs> under you, Madam Mercy Yote. Oh, the president of presidents. <laughs> and the acting registrar, Madam Shagher. Thank you for the good work you have been, which made it possible for today to hold and also for us to be here. I also like to uh, recognize the fellows here present, uh, chapter chairman, I can see Mr. Gagariga all the way from Bayasa. I know you are not being inducted today, but it's your love for Point Survey that has brought you here and uh, other council members here present. Please, let's continue to show love and passion for our profession. I'm very excited to be here today. Essentially, because of the theme of uh, today's activity, and which is the strengthening the quant surveying profession in Nigeria for global competitiveness. The president has said it all. Our profession, is an international profession. We should not restrict ourselves to Nigeria alone or what is happening in our industry or even in our ministry for those of us working in government. We think everything about quant surveying ends within your ministry. No. Even when you leave the ministry, you are still a quant surveyor. You retire, you come out, you can still practice your profession till you drop dead. And that's why you need to have a wider uh, perspective of this profession. The president has said a lot of things. I was just trying to judge and judge and judge, but it was so fast and he was saying all those points that are very essential for us. But perhaps I can still take, cast our mind back to some of these things he said. 
he spoke about uh, being focused on a profession. Yes, other professionals or other professionals, they are trying to uh, swing us in many directions, cause confusion, cause us to panic, cause us to be reacting rather than proactively planning and strategizing. So we will refrain from pursuing them and doing reactive measures. That will help. If you are a good chess player, you don't look at the immediate, you look at the wider horizon, how you can strategize. So, Mr. President, I can assure you that the Institute is quietly but firmly pursuing the direction of growth in our industry. And that's why NAQS is at the forefront of promoting the establishment of Construction Industry Development Board, which is to be an amalgam of all the professions and to direct the industry, not just singular professions. What brings us together is more than what should be separating us. Many of other professions, they are looking at the immediate, uh, what uh, Fayoshe called stomach infrastructure. We should look beyond stomach infrastructure. The industry, the, the CIDB will also help in fine-tuning a strategy to develop the industry. What kind of things we should be doing, what kind of development. to to. Be in global competitiveness. And by this, another way, when he said about global competitiveness, I want to speak about our conditions of contract. I googled Nigeria standard form of contract. Google it, Nigeria standard form of building contract. It will show a NIA publication. In 1980, that's what is shown on, the, on Google. 1980, JCT 63, as amended then. That is what is shown. And in 1963, when that uh, contract conditions were put in place, what size of projects were we doing in those days? How are projects being put together? I say, and is that same configuration still holding now? No. In those days, we are not talking about health and safety. In those days, we are not talking about buying apartments off plan. Now many of us will pay for property without seeing it. It's just on the drawing. We'll put our money down and wait for it to be developed. But when you put your money down and the developer takes all your money to develop, to now build for you, you should be able to have a say in that contract. Most international building contracts now have provisions for that kind of thing. Our JCT 63 doesn't have. And that was why last year we did the workshop on uh, updating our contract procedures, our contract documents. And I'm glad to present the outcome of that to you today. We now have the Nigerian construction industry standard form of building contracts. And one standard building form, and the other one is another standard form for design and build. We've never had a design and build form of contract with Nigeria. So the NIQS has put this up. Some say, why don't you call the architects and engineers to have a buy-in in this? Like I said, when I googled the standard form of building contract, it was an NIA sole document. They didn't consult NIQS to do it. But who decides the form of contract, especially for a building contract? It's we county surveyors. So why do we need to go and beg them to uh, approve this when we are only trying to follow global standards? So long it is established as global standard it, it, uh, that we are adopting, then there shouldn't be any problem. So with this document, it has provision for what you call uh, third party and uh, purchaser's uh, uh, rights. It has funder's rights. For those of us working in, bank, in banks and we are financing projects, the funding arrangement is all included in this, which is in line with global standard. To QSRBM for, allowing, for organizing this, 
and for allowing me to speak to all of us. Thank you and good day. One of our, uh, our past presidents of the NIQS, Mrs. Mercy Yochi, will give us her own goodwill. Mrs. Yochi. The president of uh, who is ably represented here yes, by our own Temitope. Um, QSIBN president, NIQS president, past president, and current uh, president of council. All board members, council members, elders, uh, fellows, elders, inductees. You are most uh, welcome. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I don't have much to say at this occasion than to wish all our inductees the best in life. Today, you are going to collect your licenses, and your licenses will now give you the a license to operate as a quantity surveyor and this is going to be a big milestone for a lot of you and I pray that as our president said it will not be the end of your participating in the NIQS and QSL RBN activities or even associating with any other arm of the Nigerians of quantity surveyors. The, the theme which is threatening the QS profession in Nigeria for global competitiveness is very apt. I would like to use this opportunity to invite you to think in Vietnam and to give to do some workshops. The theme will be improving construction cost prediction. Cost prediction for construction costs through standards and technology. So if you come there, you will discover all the types of technologies that will enhance global competitiveness. Because as our president said, we cannot afford to be left behind. Both the NIQS and the QSRBN are already joining forces and we can see a lot of progress being made in this direction. And if we don't grab it, then we'll be left behind. So on this note, I would like to wish each and every one of us a very successful period here, today and tomorrow. Thank you very much and God bless you. All the members of the board here present, uh, I salute you all, fellows and my other colleagues that are not fellows, I'm one of you. <laughs> uh, it, is, it gives me great pleasure to be here, I had to travel this morning, left home 5 a.m. so that I can get the first flight. After the first flight, forget it, you can wait forever. So, but because of the theme that uh, I saw, uh, I received, I said, look, that's, that's a president walking, thinking in the right direction. And I said, oh, I may need to be here, to be part of it, hear what they have to say, and contribute to the conversation that has to take place with regards to this team. And I want to offer three key things that we must look at. I just quickly scribbled them down. If we more strengthen the QS profession in Nigeria for global competitiveness, then the following must take place and it will evolve around the conversation that will take place for the, during the two days. We have to know our industry on a global scale, not local. Because if you look the local way, not many of them are thinking global or acting in the competitive world. So we must take our own profession 
to know the industry on a global scale because that's when you can compare standards or then rate yourself. Then we must get acquainted with the industries across local, national, continental and global level and benchmark our business against them. We must be acquainted with what obtains in industry across the local, national, continental and global level and benchmark our own standard against it. We must be ready to acquire more IT technologies and adapt them to delivering and operating our type of business. There are a lot of softwares. Every day they produce them. But in order to be competitive, we must get to know them and then adapt them to our local need. Because the softwares are tailor made to suit the countries that uh, they, 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 they come from. But we can take them harness them and convert them to meet our own local need. Of course, part of this adapt, uh, adapting requires affordability. Softwares are very expensive. If we have to cater for every one of the imagined QSCs, then we must look at affordability and how they can be able to afford it. Or make it uh, part of their own instrument. The last thing that I put here actually cuts across the two, NIQS and QS RPN, is that it has become necessary for us to, as a body, to have a think tank or a research unit, and we are beginning to produce a lot of professors now who will ensure continuous research into new ways of doing business, new opportunities, and check, meet our other competitors. And I say this advisedly in the light of what I got from the president of NIQS. We must be ahead of them if we have to be competitive. And the only way we can do this, Mr. President, is to put a team of think tank. If we have to pay them, pay them, let them always think and produce things that we can share in larger gatherings. That way, we have what you can call a large reservoir of knowledge that we can use to push ourselves ahead of everybody in the industry. And the QS must be ahead of everyone. Because we are the servant people, we are the, you can call it only science, because we know everything. We are taught everything. And we can use that background to push ourselves to the front, uh, to the front burner and dictate. Don't let anybody dictate to us. And I think this is, must be done quickly so that the crop of intellectuals, researchers can be put together and put out documents that will put the QS profession in ahead of others. I hope at the end of this conference you'll be a better person. I hope I, I will be. And I wish us all a happy deliberation. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Shedwan for your words of inspiration for serving and uh, about to be inducted uh, onto surveillance. We now invite the special guest of honor, represented by Mr. Pemi Tenikope, the deputy director of the Ministry of Power, Works and Housing, to give us his address. And if that is taken, I will quickly deliver a speech while I stand on existing protocol. I am honored to be invited as
as a special guest of honor to declare open the 2019 edition of the Annual Assembly of Registered Quantities of Years and induction of newly registered quantities of years and practicing firms organized by the Quantities of Years Registration Board of Nigeria. This event demonstrates the commitment of the QSRBN to exposing members of the profession to development in the construction industry, besides providing a forum for the review of the progress of the profession in Nigeria. I therefore commend the initiative of your board in this regard. Will the emphasis placed on investment in infrastructure under the economy recovery and growth plan of the federal government under President Mohamedou Buhari, registered quantities of yours are highly relevant group of professionals with their unique training as cost experts in the construction industry. More so, given the fact that there is so much that government want to provide for the nation in the area of infrastructure with limited funds. Competent quantities of yields are therefore needed to ensure that projects are executed at minimal cost. Alongside accelerated delivery of new infrastructure, the Federal Ministry of Power works and housing has identified the maintenance of infrastructure as of equal priority. It is our belief that improved maintenance of our public buildings, roads, and other infrastructure will enable government to derive maximum value from these facilities deliver improved public services quality, stimulate economic growth, create jobs, and generally improve the quality of life of its citizens. It is for this reason that the Ministry developed the National Public Building Maintenance Policy, which received the approval of the Federal Executive Council, FEC, about a month ago. Why this policy is focused on public buildings in the federal government, it is easily adaptable to other infrastructure assets at all levels of government that are also faced with public asset maintenance deficiencies. The quantities of your registration board of Nigeria is one of the relevant stakeholders to which an invitation was extended for the review of the draft policy before it was presented for FEC approval. The challenges associated with the provision, renewal, replacement of critical public infrastructure assets in Nigeria require the involvement of construction industry professionals, especially registered quantities of years. The cost of construction projects require the skills and knowledge of quantities of years to address in promoting resource optimization and value maximization. I heartily congratulate the new inductees, but with a note of caution. The status you are attending, attending today bestow on you a responsibility for probity and professionalism, as you are expected to maintain high standard devoid of compromise and fraudulent activities as you practice the profession. In concluding this address, let me once again commend the President and members of the Quantities of Years Registration Board of Nigeria for organizing this event. I urge you to keep up the good work 
and to always work together as one indivisible body. Rest assured that as one of the professional bodies under the supervision of this ministry, government will continue to support and recognize yours and the other professional bodies as indispensable partners in building the Nigeria of our dream. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is therefore my honor and pleasure to declare open the 2019 Annual Assembly of Registered Quantities of Yours and induction of newly registered quantities of yours and practicing firms. I wish you fruitful deliberation and thank you all. USRPN, Madam Murtala Mohammed, the President of NIQS, Gustavo Nashili, past President, Mr. Ajan Lekoko. One of my references is your paper you presented, The Role of Quantities of Yours in the Economic Development of Rwanda. Past President, Mrs. Mercy Iotia. I was reading the papers, they were referring to you as Mama QS. Uh, members of the board of QSRBN, fellows of the Institute, uh, other members of the Institute, the inductees, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. You have heard that I'm not a quantity surveyor. I am a historian, so I will give us a dose of some history this morning. The title is Ethical Conduct, Professionalism and general expectations of professional, of professional quantities of health. It is a great pleasure for me to be called upon to give a talk at the 2019 Annual Assembly of Registered Quantities of Health and induction of newly registered quantities of health and practicing firms. I believe that the goal of this talk is to sensitize the new inductees on the demand of your profession. I also believe that the topic of the talk is very familiar to you. I believe that. It's there in the paper. But I want to say a few things, and I plead with you that you will come along with me. Hence, as a historian, I intend to approach the discussion from a historical perspective. I wish to state from the onset that the study of history is the study of social man in the past. But the past that we study is not a dead past. It's a past that has relevance to the present and to the future. So, for this talk, I want to emphasize a number of things. Some of it, the president of, NI, of QSRBN has already laid bare before us. I will be talking more about change. History is all about change, changes taking place over time. And he has said a lot about change, change, changes. Everything about man is change. So, we're studying man in the past, but which has relevance to the present. present. So I'm saying it is an exploration of change and socio-political dynamics of human society that history studies. And that's what I want to try and do in the next few minutes that I have. It is the basis 
History is the basis for promoting values. You can't talk of values without going back to the past. So it is the basis for promoting values. It is also one of the many memories or memory systems that shape our values and our morality. So change is a unique. There was a time they were debating about uh, co consultancy fee, what it should be, and so on. And at that time, when the institute was being established, one of them mentioned that our goal should not be how much we will earn from consultancy fees. Our goal should be service delivery. I don't know whether we will agree with that position. <laughs> Challenges from other, they have maintained their calm that we can still work together. And I think that should be the attitude. One of the things I also gathered is that architects, engineers have been impressed with the service delivery of quantity surveyors yesterday in that period. I hope we are still uh, pulling our weight up to the present. Then there is the matter that the quantity surveyors in the early period established fairly, okay, I've mentioned that. Um, I want to move on to, I, I decided to bring out the mission statement of this expatriate fund in today's global world. Thank you for this. Okay. So we start. When I say I, you put your name. I. I. This way, I find. Oh, I found that. Or registration as a concept of that. I will uphold I will uphold in the integrity and dignity of the concept of the At all times and all places. In the course of practicing the profession. I will not do anything. And all act in any ways that will bring or the start amount to bring in the Portsmouth Information Institution. I will abide by all rules and regulations. I will abide by all rules and regulations set by the board in controlling the practice of the profession. Set by the board in controlling the practice of the profession. All its aspects and implications. In all its aspects and implications. I will fulfill all financial and other obligations. I will fulfill all financial and other obligations. Sanctioned by the board for the continual placement of my name on the register. Sanctioned by the board for the continual placement of my name on the register. For the register of the service. I will submit to and comply with the board's building requirements.
I will look at the following from the perspective of a teacher that is addressing the practitioners and the people from academics. I will start from uh, globalization and the traditional quantities of in practice. What training is all about? I will talk about continuous professional development and for us to know what is competitive advantage. Now, and for you, to, to evidence from the, uh, the practices and uh, the CPD that has been organized by QSRPN and uh, NIQS, there is a kind of synergy between NIQS and QSRPN. I will show you some evidence of what they have done in meeting up with the global challenges that QS will definitely face in uh, trying to go international. The first, I'm coming with the definition of globalization. You know, it's promoting a kind of growing economic interdependence among nations. And there will be cross-border transaction in goods. Uh, the past president, uh, the present president of uh, PSRPN, the NIKS president, and the past president, Ajahn Lekoko. Now, globalization is increasing the interdependence, integration, and interaction among people and cooperation in various locations around the world. And as one survey, we cannot act in isolation. I will go back a little bit into the theory of globalization and how it affects the construction industry. Now, globalization will definitely assist in the realization of national development objectives through completion of sophisticated projects. This, you should have it in mind particularly the newly inductees, even the experienced prof uh, professionals, there are things that you don't know that are coming on board. And if you must perf perform efficiently, there is, need to have, there is need for you to have knowledge of this. Secondly, business opportunities for local contractors through subcontracting and strategic alliances. And again, we have opportunity to learn, that is for the local uh, entrepreneurs in the industry. And many of these construction projects which the nations require for the social economic development are beyond the capability of their industries to undertake, owing to size, novelty, and complexity of those projects. As a result of this, developing countries must import some construction activities. This has been said by researchers since 1980, 1996, and in 2000. And today, I just want to call our attention to this, that this is the, you know, this is a statement that underpinning the need for us to get trained and retrained. And to our knowledge, the standard that we use to practice, they are all imported from overseas countries. It has been observed. And this arrangement determines the documentation procedures and practices in the industry. 
and specify the roles of the participants. For example, the density that we use, density 1983, was the one that is being used in Nigeria. And up to today, so many practices still use JCT 83. Now, where we are, where we are coming from, and then where we are going, and sorry, where we are presently and where we are going. And if we know where we are coming from, that will influence for us to be able to determine what we are doing today. And that will serve as basis for us to be able to project into the future. He has also confirmed that court surveyors of yesterday were able to meet up with the requirements of the industry plans, but today he was not able to do to say anything about that because there has been no history, there has been no uh, history regarding to the practice of the current quantity surveyors in the country. In the past, yeah, in the past during when. Uh, People like the, the president of the uh, Registration Board was being trained. There was nothing like a computer. And then they move. They are still relevant today because they get involved in training, training, and retraining. So they not call the, the impact of social political dynamics on our practice. In training terms, this means we need to develop programs. We also get trained to acquire new knowledge that is required to perform efficiently in the industry. The knowledge required to perform efficiently in the industry and the attitude to exert, to command the market is required for us to, you know, uh, to do well in the industry. Discharge your duty on the project. Now, basic ingredients. I made reference to what past president Ajaleguko said, streaming, you know, looking like what I've itemized here. Now you need to know where you are. It's very, very important. What is the level of knowledge that you have in you today? Knowing where you want to go, where are you going? If you don't know where you want to go, you will not be able to determine the kind of training needs you require to excel. Now, how do you get there? How do you get there? There, you know, assembly like this, you provide opportunity for us to refresh and to know the direction of industry, and that is where we identify what additional skill and learning that we need to do. Now, you must not stand still. Here, this man got tired. Or simply then, another man got tired here and it's a part. And this one has transformed his life. And she keep on learning. Yeah, there are some differences because when you look at it, what is the difference between training and development? I try to highlight, you know, the differences here. Training is a short-term process. But development is a continuous process. And the future challenges. Training has a limited scope. It is specific. Job oriented. On the other hand, development is career oriented and hence its scope is comparatively wider than training. In training, the trainee gets a trainer who instructs them at the time of training. The company of the Nigerian, of the president of the Nigerian Institute of Quantity Surveyors. And this testimony given to us by Quantity Surveyors in Qatar. When you identify yourself as a quantity surveyor from Nigeria, you will not be interviewed. You will be employed. And they are better paid. And that's based on NIQS qualification. What they are getting as monthly salary here, practices in Nigeria don't get it. So when you say, I'm from Nigeria, Nigeria consumers, they will overlook interviewing you. You get your employment and you will be a better place. And the only other nationals that compete with Nigeria relatively are the consumers from Sri Lanka. They are good in measurement, but not in construction contract administration. So consumers are very good in construction contract administration. This testimony was given by the chief executive of one of the college engineering consulting group. He has uh, the largest number of consumers in his employment in Qatar, and is promising to expand. Imagine you sign an MOU with uh, Nigeria Institute of Quantity Surveyors, promising that they don't have quantity surveyors, I think they are in about 19 countries, and they have quantity surveyors in their, in their practice only in Qatar. Now they are making it a policy to have quantity surveyors in all their branches. And when they want to do that, they will contact Nigeria Institute of Quantity Surveyors to do that. That is one testimony that today, Prof, maybe we don't have it in history, but 
maybe we are there well or we are meeting the requirements of uh, the present uh, clients of the industry. Now, this standard, the current president of PSRBN mentioned here in the preface to the BSMN, that is page one, paragraph two of BSMN, first thing, uh, in keeping with the institute policy of professional measurement, civil engineering standard of measurement for an international measurement standard with some adjustment to suit the main contracting culture in the Nigerian construction industry. In the files, copy of BSMM4 is to sell for the same price. There is no significant difference between the, the, the clause or the provision of BSMM4 and the revised edition. Just the typographical error and one section that was omitted. That was what was done to correct what we have in BSMM4. Now, in developing yourself, you have to read. When this document was published, NIQS stepped down training in all the geopolitical zones of the country. And then, now, after that training, then you need to get yourself, you read and read and read. Unfortunately, we still come, up, we still come across bills of quantities that prepare using SMM5. <laughs> that is not a good practice. Now, the next is, another provision that has been made. The book was developed from the presentation materials of the NIQS workshop in BIM application in project development. That from between 8th to 9th November 2016 at Fort Douglas, when Madam IP, IPP was the president. Now this view of what the book is, and the book Professor McCarthy has a chapter there, and Dr. Joshua Loro here, then Dr. Amanda Wilkin, and then the Kios Francis Aditola. He's living within and outside the country. So right now, I won't, I won't talk too much as a teacher. We are going to divide ourselves into five groups. Please, I will want you to do justice to this paper because it's something that will keep us ahead of our contemporaries or people in the built environment in Nigeria and abroad. So we want to divide the groups into the public sector, people that are in public sector, people in private practice, people in education, people in oil and gas, and others. Others include bankers, people working in the banking sector, insurance companies, and the like. So please, each of the group, I would like you to dwell, try and bring out what you think we can use to improve ourselves in terms of professional development, or what you think has gone wrong in terms of our professional development, or what you, what you think can move us forward to the next level of our competitiveness in the global you know, industry and the global sector. So please, let us divide ourselves so that we can choose our leaders in different groups. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh,